Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. Guys, we have a goal this year. We're trying to get the 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you go ahead and do that. We're trying to get the 50,000, and we'll love it if you help us get there. Anyway, let me get into this topic here. So I've tried to tell people for the longest time that I believe uh, that the Clippers are pretty much been one of the two best teams in the Western Conference over the last few years, right? I thought they were one of the best two teams in the Western Conference last season. I thought they were one of the best teams in the Western Conference this season. I've tried to tell them that, but it seems like some people out there, maybe some analysts out there, uh, they're not they're not too concerned with telling people the truth about teams. I think they're more out there trying to sell people dreams, right? They're trying to sell them dreams and sell them nice storylines instead of telling people what it is. And I just don't understand how you can talk about the good teams in the Western Conference and not mention this team. We don't need to go too far in to look at what they were able to accomplish last season in the playoffs with and, with and without Kawhi Leonard. With Kawhi Leonard, they were, able to, they were able to advance to the second round, tie that series against the Utah Jazz, a team that many people pick to beat the Clippers in the second round, a team that had the number one record in the Western Conference, if y'all remember properly. People act like as if these things never happened, right? They picked the Utah Jazz to beat them. What happened? They go down 0-2 against the Jazz. They tie up the series with Kawhi Leonard. He gets injured in game four. Then the Clippers go into Utah, a place they pretty much they didn't, they had, they haven't even won, they hadn't even won a game in that series up to that point. They go in there, led by Paul George. They go in there, they got out of win. They beat the Utah Jazz and come out and close them in six games, right? People are like, no, 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 that was a mirage. That didn't really happen. It was a fluke. They get to the second round. They take the team that eventually went to the Western Conference, represented the, the Western Conference in the NBA Finals, took them to six games without their best player. So I have full confidence uh, in this team going into, you know, going into the season. And I said, listen, if they were able to accomplish that much against, um, uh, what do you call it, against the Phoenix Suns, Without their best player, just imagine how they would have been, been able to play last season with him. And I think a lot of people felt as if, listen, if Kawhi Leonard was absent, uh, if he was present rather last season, the Clippers would have been in the NBA championship. And that means in the NBA championship round, which means that within two years, Kawhi Leonard and these guys would have been, he would have been able to lead that organization to a Western Conference championship and in the finals appearance in the first two seasons with him being with that team. That's pretty impressive, impressive if you ask me, considering this team had never been to a Western Conference finals ever before. So people that want to diminish his, you know, um, you know, the impact that it's had on that organization, the egg is really on your face, really. The guy has been able to really make that, you know, take that team to the next level. And I think he's the best player that franchise has ever had. Anyway, last night, there was a big game in the association against the Lakers and the Clippers, right? Now, we've done some videos recently. We've been producing more videos recently about the Lakers because I understand that we have an audience out there and uh, they also want to hear about the Lakers. So we've been producing some content as well, giving them our honest takes on things. And I think a lot of people out there appreciating it. I think a lot of the people that feel like as if I'm hating on the Lakers, I think they're LeBron fans that are disguised as Laker fans. And anything that you say that's critical about their favorite player is hating. So you can't even tell the truth anymore. So they would rather you know, these people on TV telling them wonderful lies, you know, and it was, oh, that's love. They really love LeBron. Meanwhile, they're lying to you. The minute I give them an honest take on things, they say, oh, this guy's hating on the Lakers and all of these different things. But what I've understood as well is that there's some Laker fans that follow our channel and they understand that I'm being forthright with them. We read their comments. There's some sober, level-headed Laker fans that follow our content and understand that, listen, this guy's just telling it like it is. And they know that whenever I thought the Lakers were the team to beat, I always said it. For instance, the year that they won the NBA championship, I thought I thought that they were the best team, uh, one of the best two, top two teams in the, in the Western Conference. And I think the only reason I didn't say that they, that they were a better team than the Clippers was because I felt as if if they were able to match up against each other, they would be able to take advantage advantage of the Anthony Davis match, given though, given the fact that Anthony Davis was definitely the better player. Uh, what do you call it? The what is it? The third best player. Uh, in that series, and he would be able to dominate the late, the Clippers in, in, in the interior. I just felt that Montrezl Harrell and these guys were going to be able to rough him up. That was the only reason, right? But I have a history of giving this team the credit when it is justified. So I want to get into what happened yesterday uh, in the game yesterday because I got a lot of things that I want to talk about, uh, and, you know, in that game. So let's get into that right here. So last night was the Battle of LA, right? And it's not, it doesn't, it didn't have the same kind of electricity that it normally would have. 
have had if uh, Kawhi Leonard was there because, you know, then you're really getting to see these two teams uh, kind of play a full strength. But going into that game, we even put up a poll on the channel, and I think the majority of the people that voted in that poll felt as if the Clippers were going to win that game. I don't know if these were Clipper fans, other fans, uh, Laker, I don't know who it was, right? But I had a lot of confidence. I had 100% confidence that the Clippers were going to win that game because I felt, I feel, rather, that they were, um, they are the better team right now. I felt like as if the Lakers right now have been stumbling and bumbling uh, this season because, you know, they haven't been been able to hit their stride. They just haven't been able to hit their stride. So I haven't seen enough evidence to make me believe that this team is going to be good. Now, some people feel as if, well, you got to wait to see some run. Well, here's the thing. The reason I felt that the Clippers would be a better team is because I have some evidence, right? I've seen that group together. I've seen that unit together. Now they move some pieces in and out with, you know, some inter they you know, replace some pieces with uh, Eric Bledsoe, getting rid of Patrick Beverly and others. But for the most part, they still have the same core. Marcus Moore Sr., Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Luke Kennard, Terrence Mann, uh, the same coach, the same head coach. So the the core of that team is still intact, right? So I pretty much, and you know, um, Reggie Jackson. So I pretty much knew what what to expect with that team. The Lakers, however, have been an experiment, and it was a seesaw battle uh, towards the end of that game, right? It was a back and forth battle. And if we go into the box score, the, the Clippers ultimately uh, prevailed. And I believe that the reason they were able to prevail was because they had a balanced attack. Marcus Moore Sr., who is my favorite Clipper in terms of, like, Kawhi's my favorite player, but Marcus, I just like him. I think he's a tough guy. I like the edge that he brings to the team. He's a great three-point shooter. Last night, he shot 66.7% from the three, went six and nine from the three-point line. That is usually how he shoots when he has spacing. And Kawhi Leonard helps him, helps him a lot with that. That's why last season, he was a number two three-point shooter in the NBA. Um, you know, of course, Serge Ibaka played well he contributed a bit to Zubak was solid for them uh Paul George he didn't have his best shooting night he went seven to 20 but he hit some pretty big shots especially in that second half so he was he was you know he was steady Reggie Jackson Mr. June he he, he contributed uh, 16 points but Luke Kennard hit some big shots he hit some big shots Eric Bledsoe also contributed in Isaiah Harden Hardenstein he also um contributed on that side if we look at the Lakers obviously LeBron James gave them a good line with 23 points um, you know, 11 rebounds, six assists, only three turnovers. Um, you know, he, he did well, but he didn't shoot very well from the three point line. I think he went three point uh, happy. He took eight attempts. I don't know why he took that many attempts and only going uh, two of eight. Anthony Davis was solid. He got you a double double with 27 and 10, uh, 27 and 10. Uh, before assists so he played well with one block I thought that was solid Dwight Howard came in and played well Malik Monk really stepped up for that team in that fourth quarter he just at, at certain points took control of the offense Carmelo Anthony was sensational but anyway ultimately we we all know the result uh, uh you know of that game ultimately the Lakers ended up losing the Clippers won and right now I still think that the Clippers are the better team uh between these two teams I still think they're the best team in in, in LA just because they have an identity I believe that the Lakers don't have an identity right now. They're not a very good defensive team. They're not a very good three-point shooting team. And this is something that Shannon Sharp has complained about on TV. He's like, listen, you guys are not, and they're not very consistent. He's like, you guys are not showing me anything for me to hang my hat on and say, okay, now I believe in you. So I think there's some questions there. On the on the side of the Clippers, though, listen, I think they're a much more improved defensive team this year. They're a top five defense. Last time I checked, I think they were number two or number three. Uh, the number two, the number three uh, defensive uh, rated um, uh, rated team. The only issue that they're having this season is with their scoring. They're finding it a little bit difficult to get points on the board. Last season, they were averaging 114.1 points per game. This season, that number has dropped down considerably. And that makes a lot of sense, given the fact that their best player, Kawhi Leonard, is not in the offense. So you're losing it. You're, you're missing an additional 25 points per game. Obviously, you don't just airdrop him in and you add 25 points to your offense. Doesn't really work that way because other guys lose opportunities. Paul George loses opportunities. So it's not as, you know, it's, it's not like that, hopefully. But you guys understand. Um. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make, they're just struggling to get points on the board. But I had 100 percent confidence that they were going to win that game yesterday. And that's exactly what happened. Right. And this is the reason why I feel as if if you're able to bring Kawhi Leonard back in all around the all star break and they, they're they firing on all cylinders. For me, I just said, listen, the Clippers job this season is absolutely very simple and it's crystal clear. The only job that the Clippers have this season is to ensure that they are in the playoffs. That is all. Ensure that you're still within the playoff picture right now that a number six seed in the Western Conference, the Lakers are the number seven seed. Just ensure you're there and make sure you're not in the playing tournament. Kawhi Leonard comes back. I, I feel like they can beat any team in the Western Conference. The only team that I think is going to be a major, major hurdle is, excuse me, the only team is going to be the Phoenix Suns and the, and the, and the 
and the Golden State Warriors. Those are really the teams I don't have much enough data on as far as watching these two teams compete against each other. But for me, I think the, the Clippers are the best team in the Western Conference right now. I think honest and sober Laker fans will see that. And I think there's some Laker fans that understand if this team stays packed, they, you know, I don't, they don't, they, right now they're a 500 team. You are what your record says you are. Period. End of story. There's no, uh, well, this, no, no, you are what your record says you are. You can say you're as, you're as smart as you feel, but if you can, if you consistently get C's in a semester, you are a C student, whether or not you believe you're smarter, whether or not, whatever you believe, if that's what your grades are, that is exactly who you are until you, you prove otherwise. Now, what we say, not what others think until you show us otherwise, that's who you are. Right now, they're a 500 team and they need to pick it up. So these are my thoughts and opinions on that. The question is quite simple. What team do you think is the best team in L.A. right uh, The best team in L.A. right now, whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoy the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the, uh, the like button, hit the subscribe button. And also make sure you hit that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're trying to get to 50,000 subs. Thank you guys for your attention. and We'll definitely catch you guys on the next episode.